Alicia here from Frugal Abundance and today you asked, I listened, we're going to make the 30 minute rolls. So I do mine a little differently than most people and I also want to say that though they're called 30 minute rolls, you should plan for them to take about 45 minutes. So we're going to look and see, it's 1.15, you can see that up there, my oven's heating up. Um, the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees and then in my cup here I have one cup of whole milk and a third cup of honey and I'm going to go put this in the microwave to warm it up. I will be back in just a moment. So friends, I ended up heating my milk and honey for right at a minute, but I have a low powered microwave. So I would suggest you start at 45 seconds. My oven's ready. And I, once that is heated, um, I'm going to add two tablespoons of active yeast. I like the, um, I think it's called Red Star. They sell it in bulk at Costco and other places. That's what I use. Um, I keep it here in my two quart jar. Um, it won't all fit in a one quart jar. And so I am going to proof this for 10 minutes. So we're going to let this um, milk, honey, and yeast go for 10 minutes. And then I will bring you guys back when we mix up our rolls. One other thing I want to tell you real quick. We're going to use a full stick of butter in this recipe. You're going to end up cutting two teaspoons off of the end of this butter. So each tablespoon is three teaspoons. So if you cut right about there, that'll give you that. And we're going to save that to butter our pan with. So just in case, I don't want to forget later on as we're going. So friends, while your yeast is coming alive, there's a few other things I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and measure three and a half cups of bread flour or all-purpose flour into your mixer or if you're going to mix by hand into your bowl. I want you to take your little nub of butter and go ahead and grease a quarter sheet pan or um, you could also use a 9 by 13 glass pan and you may have to cook them a little longer if you use the glass pan. And in addition to that, you're going to need one egg for this recipe. So let's get the egg and put it in hot water so that we're bringing it up warm. Part of what makes these rolls work in a short amount of time is that we have all of our ingredients on the warmer side. So, um, also, I want you to get not just your flour, but your um, teaspoon of salt as well in here. So guys, I, again, will bring you back when we are ready to pour the yeast into the mixer. One other important thing that I forgot, what's left of your stick of butter, you need to take and um, melt in the microwave or however you like to melt it. Bring it just to melting. We're not looking for super hot because we'll kill our yeast with super hot just to melting. All right, guys, I'll see you back in just a minute. So friends, I just wanted to show you my butter real quick. You can see it's mostly melted. There's still some solid in there. This was 45 seconds in my microwave. So if you have a good microwave, you're probably looking at 35 seconds. Um, and that's fine because what's in there is going to be soft. You're going to have some residual carryover heat that will continue to melt that. So I will get this over here to the side and we are pretty close to being ready to make this dough. So friends, our timer just went off. Um, you can see our yeast has proofed. It's bubbly in there. It smells yeasty. If you want to use instant dry yeast, I will put the instructions for that down below and that makes these just a little bit quicker. Um, you're still going to be measuring out all your ingredients and stuff, so I just go with what I have and I always have regular active dry yeast. So now we are going to um, pour in our yeast and honey mixture. Get all those yeasty beasties in there. To this, I am going, well, first I'm just going to get it going.
and I just made a mess. Did you guys see that? Getting my egg out of the uh, water. So now there's water spilled here, but that's okay. So our dough is kind of starting to come together a little bit. We're gonna crack in our egg. going to pour in our melted butter. And if you are kneading this by hand, then you just want to um, bring all your ingredients together in a bowl and start mixing and that will get you started. So you can see, we're going to turn that up a little bit and let that go. So our recipe calls for three and a half to four and a half cups of flour. So I can tell that this is too soft and that we're going to need some more. So I'm going to go ahead and add another half cup of flour. I don't want it to go everywhere. We'll let that work in and see kind of where that gets us. Guys, that is going to be plenty of flour for today. Um, so I ended up at four cups of flour. Sometimes it ends up being three and a half. Sometimes I've had to go as high as five. It just kind of depends on your humidity and temperature where you are. So guys, that is now what we're going to call together. So we'll turn this off. And this is a very sticky, not smooth kind of dough. So don't think that that's what you're looking for. Move this back. And I am gonna hand shape these. A lot of people say you should grease your hands or flour your hands. I don't do that. I reach in, I grab a handful of dough, and I roll it. And I don't ever have a problem with it sticking to my hands or anything like that. He feels a little big though. So there's one. I'm going to keep pulling pieces of dough and rolling them and putting them on here. And I will bring you guys back when we take this over to rise. All right, friends, I've got these over here resting. I'm going to get a piece of saran wrap and sit, and I'm going to let these rest for 10 minutes in my warm kind of stove area. My stove vents right here, so that warmth is going to come and help them rise some before we put them in the oven. So, guys, I just took my plastic wrap off. Um, your rolls, they don't really rise so much as they rest for the 10 minutes. Um, but at this stage, you can leave them covered and keep them on the top of your stove or wherever you're proofing them for up to 45 minutes. If you go much longer than that, they're going to overproof. Um, so I am going to get these into my oven and these will go between 10 and 15 minutes. I'll bring you guys back when we're pulling them out of the oven. So friends, while our rolls are cooking, I thought I would bring you over and show you the Christmas tree. So here's the Christmas tree. It's weird how the LED lights come in and out as you move the camera. Um, it kind of looks like a tree out of Whoville this year, I think. Up there on top, I had a bunch of those alligator clip uh, silver spirals and I just put them all together to make a topper for the tree this year. So 
So there's our tree in our bay window. So guys, these have just a couple minutes left. And at this point, this is totally optional. But as soon as they start to get a little bit brown, I always pull them out and rub the tops down with butter. That's just, I had an aunt that made these and made them for years. And that's just how she always did it. So that's what I do. Doesn't mean that you have to do it this way. So I will put these back in the oven for about two minutes and then they will be ready. Okay friends, our rolls are out of the oven now. You can see them sitting over here. And I'm going to taste one for you. Um, I just, a, a quick little caveat. I see a lot of people talking about these online saying, oh, they're just like a roll. They're not just like a roll. So if that's what you're expecting, take the time to make rolls for two hours or go buy some Sister Shoebirds <laughs> because 30 minute rolls are not going to be just like a roll. It takes time, gluten, yeast, and rising to make a roll taste just like a roll. These end up somewhere kind of between a biscuit and a roll. You can definitely tell that they're yeasty, but they have a moisture crumb like a biscuit does um, and a little bit more dense of a crumb. They're not like hockey pucks. Here, I've already pulled this one in half, but there's, we got a nice brown bottom, lightly brown top. It's hot. And that kind of gives you an idea of the crumb of the inside. So it's not, um, it's not stringy like a roll, if that makes sense, because you didn't, you didn't develop the gluten in these the way you would a regular roll. So let's give it a taste. That said, they're delicious. I'm not trying to tell you that they're not good. I just want you to know what you're getting into if you decide to make them. Mmm. I have an aunt that has been making these for as long as I can remember and I'll be 40 next year. So this isn't some new Pinterest thing. These have been around a long time and these taste just like hers. You can taste the honey, the uh, milk gives it a delicate crumb. They're really good guys. Mm. So guys, I hope you like this video. Um, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.